Hi there, I'm Kaya Hubbard with US News and World Report. This week, US News launched its inaugural Best States for Gender Equality rankings, which highlight places across the country that have created good environments for equal treatment between men and women. The rankings incorporate metrics related to representation, health, education, the economy, and more. I encourage you to visit usnews.com to read some of our editorial coverage and to dig deeper into the data and methodology. Now I'll turn it over to Morgan Felchner, U.S. News Executive Editor for News and Events, for a discussion with Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont about what his state is doing to advance gender parity. U.S. News recently launched a new analysis looking at gender equality in states. We examined disparities between men and women in five categories to determine which states were the best in the nation in terms of gender equality. We looked at education, economy, health, family planning, and representation. And our guest today has a lot to cheer about in his state. Governor Ned Lamont, thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to hearing about all the things your state is doing to further gender equality. Thanks, Mark. Great to see you. Governor, in the new U.S. News Best States for Gender Equality rankings, Connecticut was number one for economy and the number seven state overall. What makes the nutmeg state a leader in gender equality? Uh, we're moving on up, but I'll tell you, number one is uh, I want us to always be the most family-friendly state in the country. And uh, that means, um, A, it's a great place to come and uh, have a child. And uh, once your child is born, we have the best, most expansive um, uh, daycare, childcare, infant care there is. We got our schools open faster. We have some of the best schools in the country. And uh, those are all reasons I think that it makes it easier for moms and dads to get back to work. And uh, that's really important when it comes to equality. Absolutely. One thing we, we also looked at was pay equity. And we all know that, that women don't make as much on the dollar as men. And, but, but specifically, our analysis found that women in Connecticut earned 97% of what men earn, the smallest pay disparity in weekly earnings of any state in the nation. What have you done in your state to erase this kind of pay disparity? And, and what more would you like to see from the public and private sector in Connecticut to make sure that you can maybe get to 100% one day? Well, we changed some uh, laws. For example, uh, you're not allowed to ask what uh, the female applicant was earning before. We put out guidelines in terms of what the pay scale is for the jobs that uh, they are looking for. But uh, more importantly, Morgan, um, look, I was a CEO of a company. Um, now I am of a state. And you are crazy if you do not open the widest search you can possibly. I mean, too often in business, too often in state governments uh, round up the usual suspects. And those are often overwhelmingly male folks who have been there for a long time. So we make it easier for women to get back to work. And, um, and pay equity is part of that. Everybody knows what their peers are earning. If you're not treating somebody fairly, they find out about it. And that sends a ripple effect that you're disrespected in the community. We're not letting that happen in Connecticut. That's great. Those sort of laws are really are important in making sure that you can that you that you get hit 97% the best in the nation and get closer to 100%. Um, now we'll turn to abortion and reproductive rights. You recently announced a number of support services and resources for individuals seeking abortions in the wake of the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade earlier this summer. Your administration also encouraged businesses in states that have restricted or are considering restricting reproductive rights to relocate to Connecticut and be assured legal protections. Can you talk a bit more about these decisions and what you want our readers and viewers to know about abortion and reproductive rights in Connecticut? Yeah, I, here in Connecticut, I think even in Texas and beyond, uh, people were shocked that the Supreme Court overturned uh, 50 years of established law. Uh, what it says about, I think, disrespecting women, I don't want anybody's lectures about um, freedom. You're taking away a fundamental freedom, especially uh, women's right to decide when they want to have a baby. That's a fundamental freedom that uh, the courts are challenging and probably going to be outlawed in states like Texas. We're not going to let that happen here in Connecticut. And even bigger, um, look, you're an employer. You're a boss. Um, you're a, a female um, uh, president or employee. Think about a state that respects women. Think about how that makes it easier for you to recruit the best and the brightest. That's why we sent an outreach to an awful lot of companies in um, red states that were less likely to allow a freedom of choice when it comes to reproductive rights. We said, think about Connecticut. Did you hear back from any of those companies yet? Yeah, we're getting some inquiries. It's great. I mean, 
because they are getting inquiries from uh, employees, particular female employees, saying, um, hey, it's great, you're going to fly me up to Connecticut if I um, you know, need an abortion, but uh, how come I'm not in a state that respects women? That's what I hear. In our new, in, in our new rankings, you already talked about uh, family leave, but Connecticut absolutely excelled in our sub ranking of family planning and care, which encompasses single parent child care costs, paid family leave, and women's access to birth control and maternal mortality. This year, Connecticut residents are eligible for a new paid family and medical leave program, part of a bill that you signed into law in 2019. What does this new program do to meaningfully move the state towards gender equality? It means that um, you're a young mom to be and uh, you desperately need that job and you want to make sure that you can have that baby and also have that baby safely, healthily, and know that you've got a job on the backside. And just as importantly, it means that you're going to be paid a um, reasonable uh, wage in between during that 12 weeks that you're uh, having that baby and at home, and you've got that job guaranteed. I think it's the type of um, benefit that's so important in recruiting, retaining the very best um, employees, you know, starting with women, starting with young women of childbearing age, and I think it's paying dividends. I think um, a lot of our bigger companies uh, Morgan had done this for you know many years. Our smaller companies didn't have the wherewithal to do it. So we put in place the program to make it possible for small businesses. And, it, and it, I think that you had 9,000 applications in the first two months of the program, um, which to me sounds, sounds great. Um, any other results you can share with us? Yeah, we worried, oh my God, everybody's gonna take uh, paid leave uh, during August when it's really warm. That has not happened. Everybody says they're going to maximize all 12 weeks. No, they, they take as much time as they need to get back in the game, be it from a health point of view or a birth point of view. So people are not uh, abusing the system. They're respecting the system. And by the same token, the system respects them. Now, let's switch to something that's been in the news a lot lately, of inflation and affordability. Um, what are you doing to address inflation and affordability in, around day-to-day -day expenses, housing, and other different areas? in your state? Cutting taxes, for one. A biggest middle class tax cut in the history of the state. Um, but we uh, cut the gasoline tax. We have a child tax rebate back to kids again. Uh, $250 per child uh, up to the age of 18. So we're sending out $500, $750 checks uh, today as we speak, just in time for back to school. Uh, we've eliminated the income tax for seniors, uh, pensions, and uh, 401ks. And we've eliminated the income tax for working families up to about 50 or $60,000 a year. All little things that make life a, a bit more affordable as we go through what I hope are the last throes of inflation, but time will tell. <clears throat> One other thing is during the pandemic, obviously women were hit harder than men. And I wonder um, if you've seen much of a, a shift back for, for women in the workforce and whether they've you, women are returning to the workforce in Connecticut um, and allowing you to achieve that 97% pay equity after the pandemic, which, which was, was devastating to, to many women and I mean everybody around the country, but especially women. Yeah, Morgan, so um, not only is our unemployment rate going way down, our labor participation rate is going back up. That's really important to me and really important to states like Connecticut, really important when it comes to quality of opportunity, because those are often women who um, you know, had to drop out of the uh, workforce during the pandemic. And that's why we have paid failure medical leave. That's why we have expanded daycare and childcare. That's why we keep our schools open. So every month now we have a few more um, folks joining the workforce. You know, stay, you know, maybe down there in Austin, Texas, where you are, you have you know, tens of thousands coming in every month from places, I don't know, California. Uh, here, um, it's a lot easier to get people who are already in the state back into the workforce. And there's a particular emphasis there upon women since they are the ones disproportionately hit by COVID. And they are coming back into the workforce. And our participation rate is just about the highest in the country. I'm really proud of that. Turning to representation and power, Connecticut was the first state to elect a woman to the governor's office, Ella Grasso, in the 1970s. Today, in addition to Lieutenant Governor Susan Beiswitz, two of the state's seven members of the U.S. House and Senate are women. How are you working to boost representation for women in government and leadership positions? Uh, you know, half our commissioners are women. I've made a big emphasis upon judges and state police, 
uh, more women. I, you want a society where young people can look up and see somebody just like me and uh, looks just like me. Uh, she can do that and I can do that too. And I didn't do that through some affirmative action program. I just cast the widest net possible to attract the very best and the brightest from within the state and beyond. And it just so happened we've got about half of our commissioners and more and more of our judges and cops are women. It's great. That is great. Can you point to any other states that you see with model programs or efforts related to gender equality? Anything else you, you are sort of eyeing that you might want to do in, in Connecticut in the, in the days and weeks ahead? I like other states to follow our lead. Uh, I think it makes a big difference. Uh, I respect the Massachusetts. They've got a great education system, what that means going forward. You know, in terms of what else I can do, uh, we provide free workforce training. And uh, when I say free workforce, it not only means you can go get a, a degree in 18 weeks at the community college, but it means we provide free transportation. It means we provide daycare, free daycare, to get everybody back in the game and when it comes to women, it comes to underserved populations more broadly. It's an extraordinary time in America. The, the Connecticut, for example, has 100,000 jobs that are just going begging right now because people don't have the skills. So this is an absolutely important time to make sure everybody knows they get that, um, they shot at the opportunity. And that's what we're doing for folks. Yeah, workforce training is, is really important. And I know um, you know, companies across the across the nation are, are struggling with hiring and finding people that are qualified. Um, have you have you seen a lot of uptake in, in this in, in your program? And, and are you getting a lot of people that that are coming in and, and wanting to be trained for for some of these new jobs? Absolutely. Um, and by the way, every business that looks at Connecticut asks question number one, two, and three is workforce, workforce, workforce. Will I have the trained workforce I need? So I continue to grow and expand. First time in my life, that is uh, the number one issue. And uh, yes, um, making sure these are not, you know, two-year programs or four-year college programs. They're often um, 18, 24-week certificate programs that allow you to start earning while you're learning. Maybe you keep going and um, go to community college in the evening after a day's work. So people are taking real advantage of that. And I'm finding... Um, Education at a community college, college is more, you know, on ramps and off ramps. I get a job, now I do a little bit of education. It's not like in the old days, back in the Ming Dynasty when I graduated, when you graduated, you stopped education, you went to work, and uh, you changed, uh, changed the lights. That's not the way it is now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with the new people being trained, I imagine it is, it's appealing to companies that, that might want to move to Connecticut. So when you're making those pitches and you're sending, you know, you're, you're inviting those companies to join you in Connecticut, what are you saying? What are the benefits of, of Connecticut, Connecticut for the, those companies and their workers? I say uh, we have uh, uh, one of the best education systems in the country. Um, we're just ranked the number one community college because of all the flexibility we're providing there. You know, my number one responsibility to you is to make sure you get the workforce, the trained workforce you need. Um, and uh, that's my pledge to you. We're, it's less about, you know, handing out big incentives to companies, but giving them the guarantee they need. And by the way, a great education system is one of the things that attracts young families and uh, young moms to Connecticut. Uh, you don't have to send your kid to private school or something. There's a great public school around the corner. And let's t let's touch on education for a bit. Um, it's extremely important in in getting rid of any disparities, both gender disparities and racial disparities. So so talk a bit more about the education in, in the education environment in Connecticut and some of the wins that you're seeing. Um, pre K, universal pre K, we're moving in that direction. Um, best K through twelve in the country. Getting more internships and apprentice programs. Getting more women in our engineering and manufacturing so that again young women can look up and see a role model and make sure they know they've got a place at electric boat just like the guy in the desk next to them so we are doing a good job i think of widening the lens letting people know what those opportunities are and as i said before it's a once in a lifetime opportunity you get the skills we can guarantee you a job that's wonderful now governor any parting words or other takeaways for our viewers things that people should know about connecticut I would just say, um, if you're a young person, you're a young family, you're a mom, mom-to-be, uh, I think states like Connecticut are really um, worth a second look. 
given the quality of our education system and the unique time where I can guarantee you a job on the back end. We'll give you the training, the workforce you need to get it done. It's a really unique time in America. I know um, we're a little bit grumpy because of uh, you know 8% inflation, but it's a growing economy. It's an economy that's gonna lift everybody up. And I'll just tell every state and every CEO in the country, you are crazy if you don't make things easier for women to get back into the workforce and to grow and prosper at the long at the same time they have a healthy and growing family. Absolutely, I completely agree. Um, now, Governor, congratulations again on your state's placement in the best states for gender equality ranking. Um, we're really happy to introduce it, and we're we're very very thrilled that you were able to come and talk to us a bit more about your about your state. Um, thank you for all the work that you're doing, and thank you so much for joining us today. Nice to see you, Morgan. Thanks, everybody.